Oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. But then, of course, I live way out in the country. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, March 8th. Tomorrow is Thursday. I know you knew that. But I've got a live streaming event. We do it every Thursday, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, the same time that market bell goes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know what it sounds like. As soon as you hear that, me and Lily are live on YouTube. We're talking to our viewers for roughly an hour about stocks they're interested in. So if you've got a stock you want me and Lily to take a look at, stop on in. We'll look at the charts. We'll look at the news. We'll give you an honest opinion about it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, on this show, we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And every day I'm out there hunting. I'm going through news. I'm looking at charts. Now, everywhere I'm looking is everywhere I'm looking because penny stocks are on every single market. The OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. Because a penny stock is nothing more than a stock that's under five bucks. It has nothing to do about what market they're on. Now, when I do my research on stocks, primarily OTC stocks, but actually all the stocks, I start right here at the otcmarkets.com website. I really appreciate what this site does. They bring in all this information daily. It's updated by FINRA and the SEC, which is why I start here. Why go running out to Google, sorting through all that old information, trying to find what's current? This is always current. They give you everything. You get your filings, you get your financials, your share structure, and they bring in a lot of information from the major exchanges too. So it can't hurt to start here. So let's take a look at how our OTC finished today. Bloody heck, it better be better than that. We're going to refresh it, see what we get here. Not much. Oh, man. Everything is low. Our dollar volume, which we would like to see at 2 billion, is at 1.5 billion, just hovers in this area. Share volume, we're hovering around 5 billion. We need to be at 10 billion. And trades, we were hovering around 250. Now we're hovering around 200. So things are slowing down more and more. I don't know what it's really going to take to kick the OTC into gear again, but whatever it is, I hope it comes soon. All right, I've got some stocks I did go find for us today. They've all got beautiful charts and are pretty interesting. Let me show you what I found for us today. This first stock we're taking a look at, it is interesting. VPRB Vapor Brands, buzzing all over the line. Lots of people watching it. Chart has been on fire for days, though it did have a pullback today. She hasn't got any news, but she's got one filing. And I do believe it's all about this filing. But it is all based on a misconception, a misunderstanding. That's the way I see it, and I'm going to show you why. This is VPRB, finished today just about 20 cents with almost 5% loss. She's on the pink tier and current, got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see that other green tick I'm always telling you to look for, verified profile. These are important, especially if you're in a stock for a long hold. If you're just trading it for a short swing or a day trade, don't worry about it too much. So what is this company about? You've probably already guessed. Vapor Brands is a technology holding company whose assets include issued U.S. and Chinese patents for atomization related products, including technology for medical marijuana vaporizers and electronic cigarette products and components. The company is also engaged in product development for the vapor or vaping market, including e-liquids, vaporizers and accessories for essential oils cannabis concentrates and extracts like CBD, as well as electronic cigarettes containing nicotine. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, good. She's doubled. She's gone from 220,000 shares to 402,000 shares. Not a huge number, but she is getting some attention, like I said. And this was one of those days where the price actually dropped. Share structure for the company, not bad. We've got outstanding shares of 88 million. They tell us the unrestricted are 46, which is normally what I think of as the float. They give us a float here of 43. Well, I did my Google search and it looks to be about 34. Better than what they said. So I think we have a float of about 34 million. Financials for Vapor Brands. 
All right, she is up and down, up and down. At the end of 2021, she had $6.2 million. We know that's millions because there's three zeros here. We're told to put those behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. Looking at the quarterly to get an idea for 2022. First quarter, a million. Second quarter, roughly a million. Third quarter, roughly a million. Well, they did over six million last year, so it looks like they're falling behind here. Looking at their disclosures. Well, this is where it all begins, folks. This little lonesome 8K right here. This came out March 1st. They tell us here that on March 1st, Elf Brand paid a half a million dollars to VPR Brands for a licensing agreement that they made. They say that Elf Brands is gonna sell VPR's products and VPR is going to get a 5% gross sale royalty. And it's supposed to be equal to about a half a million dollars a month. So where does the confusion come in? Right here. Can you see these? <laughs> you see Elf Bar. This is where the confusion comes in. Everybody is under the impression that this vapor company is selling the number one selling vapor device in the UK. I think it's number two in the US and it's fastly growing to number one. I've got a few of them here. So how do we know that vapor isn't selling these? Well, I'll tell you how we know. First off, we've got information. I've got an article over here that breaks some good information down for us. Check this out. The parent company of Elf Bar is Szechuan Eye Miracle Technology. They are being sued by Vapor Brands, a Florida-based company that claims to have the rights to the Elf brand for vaping products in the U.S. Vapor is also suing several U.S. master distributors of Elf Bar products. So it's not just the people making them, but it's the people to distribute them as well. The lawsuit was filed last fall in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. The judge granted a motion for a preliminary injunction preventing iMiracle from importing Elf Bar branded products and their master distributors from selling them while the case is argued. So the truth of the matter is they can't make them and sell them to America anymore. We cannot bring them into the country. There is nobody selling them. If they have any left, it's from the stock they had left over. They tell us here that iMiracle is no longer shipping the Elf Bar branded products to the US and the master distributors are no longer supplying them. And when you read further in this article, they say if you are buying these, they're black market. They're copycats, they're not the originals. So chances are, I don't even have the originals here. They tell us that iMiracle is appealing the preliminary injunction. VPR Brands applied for a trademark for the name ELF in 2017 and it was registered in 2018. Now understand this, it's not that Vapor is suing this company for the product. It's not the product that they are saying that this company stolen from them. It's just the word ELF. The word ELF is trademark, so they can't call this an ELF bar. They could call it a gnome bar or a bunny bar, but they can't call it an elf bar. VPR doesn't seem to currently offer for sale any nicotine vaping products using the names elf or elf bar, although it sells a battery for cannabis carts called the Elf Auto Draw Conceal Oil Vaporizer under its Honey Stick brand. VPR recently launched a website, and that's where I'm going to take you to right now. This is their primary website, and they show you pictures of the products they have, and then the brand logos. Well, you don't see Elf Bar in here, and I guarantee you, if they were selling Elf Bar, the number one product in all sorts of places, they'd have that brand listed here. And then when you do zoom in on the ones that similarly look like an Elf Bar, that's them right there. But these actually have cartridges that go in. There's no cartridge in this. That's disposable. It is rechargeable uh, and they last for about three weeks, cost about 15 to $20 and you throw them away when you're done. This one you do not. You just throw away the uh, pod that you're putting inside there. So as you can see, the company does not have any connection to the Elf Bar, but there seems to be a lot of talk that it does. What they do seem to have is some Elf products that are based on THC. 
but <laughs> that's a long ways from an elf bar. All right, let's go take a look at this chart and I'll show you how hot it has been. I did tell you this was a hot chart. This is ticker VPRB, and we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this from TD Ameritrade. So we're looking at a six month, four hour view here. Six months ago, we had a low of 2.2 cents. She was under the 200 day SMA, but once she got on top of it, she stayed up there. She's been up there for the longest time until the 21st. That's when things changed and I don't know why. There's no filings, there's no news. So I don't know what the catalyst was. I know that it's all about this, but how it got started, I really don't know. So it was here on the 21st of February at about seven cents. And on March 3rd, she hit roughly 28 cents. You're looking at 400% run right there. She has fallen back and she's landed right on top of her nine day SMA. Nice landing for such a hard run. Lots of volume came into the picture during this time, but right now it is cooling off. Is it done? I don't know. How many people still think the company has control of this product? Technicals, they too are cooling off. Everything is starting to turn downwards. We even have a crossover on the MACD about to occur. Our 20 day, one hour view. She was under everything back here with her low of six cents. Once she got on top of that 50 and hit her head on that 200, she changed her mind. She wasn't gonna stay down anymore. Got on top of her nine, has been riding that nine day and 20 day SMA all the way up to the high bubble. Fell back, looked like she was gonna cleave to that 20 day, but didn't. Today she broke away from it and looks like she's working her way down to the 50 day SMA, which is roughly 18 cents. And our technicals are still cooling off. Five day, five minute. So we got a low back here on the 1st of March of 12 cents, and she hit a high here on the 6th of 27. That is over 100% run. Now, I also see we've got a new SMA on a board, our 200-day SMA. Now, I've got this sneaky suspicion that when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price nine out of 10 times is gonna run over to it. Maybe it'll tag it and run away, maybe it'll hit it and stay there, but it always seems to want to go to it. And it doesn't matter if the price is under the SMA or over it, it just goes to it. And that's almost what it looks like here, right? She's way up here high, it comes into the picture, and then boom, falls right to the 200 day SMA. She then bounced off of that and she's hitting it again. I could think that she would bounce off of it again. That is my feeling. But all the technicals say she is still falling. Four hour, one hour, and the five minute. They don't show any strength at all. But with the appearance of the SMA and maybe some more confusion amongst the investors, we can see some more rise out of this. I'm kind of surprised I'm showing you this stock. This is Herb, ticker ERBB, American Green Inc. This company's been around for a long time and I've known of it for a long time. It is a cannabis company and she has had her ups and downs. And right now she is on and up. Business is growing. But the truth of the matter is, there is no filings. There's lots of news, but nothing I would call a catalyst. But there's lots of good growth news going on. But the chart, the chart is hot. The chart is set up for a breakout. Now you've got to understand, Herb has got a lot of followers, a lot of shareholders. Most companies, they've got hundreds maybe of shareholders. This company has tens of thousands of shareholders. And the chart being where it is, I think it's a big temptation. So we're going to take a look at Herb. ERBB, American Green, finished today at 0013. She didn't move though. We don't have any up or down motion by the end of the day. Now I really like this price folks. Anytime I can get a stock near 001, I am excited because there's very little motion needed to get it to 002 and 003. That's 100 and 200% gains just moving that little itty bitty amount. So this is a very good price opportunity. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and hey, hey, she's got both of those green ticks I'm always telling you about. 
Now they tell us down here, American Green Inc. is the second oldest publicly traded cannabis company in America with over 50,000 certified shareholders as of December 31st, 2018. As you can see, this is a little bit old. So what I wanna do is I wanna take you over to their most recent news press. This is a corporate update and it tells us everything they've been doing and what they're doing and we'll explain about the company more than anything else I can share with you. So they start off here that in May of 2022, American Green purchased the approximate 40,000 square feet building now known as American Green Cypress Chill. They got that for $3.75 million. And just a little while ago, they got $12 million invested into the company to help them build that out. Now they've already got one growing facility called Sweet Virginia, which we're gonna tag onto here in just a minute. America Green is looking at a potential cannabis grow property south of the city of Phoenix. It is also looking to purchase a cannabis license to own and operate a cannabis dispensary in Arizona. The company continues to have an excellent working relationship with Curaleaf, who has been purchasing almost all of the premium cannabis growing at Sweet Virginia Grow Facility since June 2020. The products are in over 70 Arizona dispensers. Adding on to that, they tell us here that all of the cannabis grown at Sweet Virginia is sold only to Curaleaf, and we have a sales contract to keep producing our premium cannabis for them until mid-2026. We also have a renewal clause that has an additional three separate five-year periods when exercised. So they've got a buyer for all of their marijuana, and they don't even have to package it or put it on the shelves. They're just selling it to Curaleaf, which is one of the biggest cannabis companies out there right now. American Green expects fiscal year over year revenue to be more than double to the amount of $4 million. Now we haven't seen the revenues yet, but they are declaring that they can hit $4 million this year. American Green plans to launch a new and more effective CBD products on Amazon and other e-commerce sites this year. They've been on Amazon for quite a while selling CBD products. The company also acquired VendWeb Vending Company in 2022. VendWeb is the supplier of American Green's AGX facial recognition age verifying smart vending cannabis machines. VendorWeb is also a retail vending machine business division that has now been integrated into the company. This company got another company to help them with their vending machines that sell cannabis goods. And these are starting to be placed out, but we haven't seen enough information about it. I know other companies are starting to do it. I've been waiting for this company to do it. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's see what we have. Oh boy, dropped more than 50% from 13.5 million to just over 5 million shares today. Taking a look at our share structure, oh my God, it's horrible, it's huge. 4.1 billion shares. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I did not go looking into the pink disclosure and I did not go to Google to check this out. <laughs> What's the best I'm gonna find? That it's 3.6 billion instead of 4.1 billion? Woohoo! I'm excited about that. Anything in the billions is just too many shares in the float. But in saying that, I will gladly play a stock for a short swing or a quick day trade, regardless of how many shares in the float. If I can catch a gain, that's all I'm there for. Financials for Herb. All right. What was it they said? 2023, they were expecting to do $4 million. 2022, they did $2.2 million. So they're right, they're planning on doubling that. 2022, we've only got the first two quarters here, a half a million and a half a million. We don't have a whole lot of information here. Matter of fact, no, they're not late on anything, although they should be. Where's September's? Where's December's? That's the one everybody's bringing out right now. So they could be in a little bit of hot water here. And their revenues don't show any growth yet, but they seem pretty confident. Looking at their disclosures, we got nothing. Not for 13 years, not one sec filing here. And running over to that news. All right, we took a look at the most 
current piece of news here, which pretty much covered all of this other stuff in here. Like I said, they got a $12 million investment for Cypress Hill so they could finish building that. And they've been getting money from a lot of people through the last couple of months. So things are looking good for them. We don't see the increase in revenue, but they claim it. They have lots of different businesses going on. The vending machines would help if they could get those out there, but it is all about the chart. Because she has so many shareholders, I think the way the chart is set up, it's easily gonna break out and take advantage of it. Let me share with you what I found. This is Herb, ticker E-R-B-B, six month, four hour view. We got a high bubble six months ago at 003, hit a low at the end of December of 001. Coming off of that low, she bounced hard and fast, crossing her 50 and the 200, came back down under her 50, and she's been arguing with this 50 all the time and is now getting pinched between her 50-day and her 200-day SMA. Lots of volume. The volume is always pouring into this thing. Even a slow volume day is a big volume day for Herb. Now, our 200-day SMA is virtually flat. This is the most advantageous time for this to get up. And being on top of the 50, she is in perfect placement. What do our technicals say about this? Well, our PPO is flat, but it is on top of the pink line. Our MACD, same exact thing, flat, but on top of the pink line. Our RSI is flat in the middle. It is right here at 50. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So we're looking at our 200 here. She's following that underneath, over it, under it, over it. And she's sitting on it right now. And there is our 50 day SMA after coming under the 200, got close to crossing it here, fell back down. Looks like it's going to get on top. We need to get that 50 day on top of the 200. And when she crosses, everybody's going to see that. And that is a power sign. A lot of people like to call that the golden cross. That is a power sign. And we got that about ready to happen. Technicals, we got nothing to say down here. Everything is just really flat and silent. Five day, five minute. All right. What you basically got here is what we like to call a barcode or a picket fence. Dee -dee 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 just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's what happens when you're real close or in the triple zeros. You don't get a lot of activity, but you do get a lot of gains. We are at a perfect price for it to start running. She is sitting firmly firmly on top of this 200 day SMA. She has come down right now and our 50 day SMA is falling. Things don't look great, but they do have potential. And as I said, because they have so many investors and the chart finally has gotten into a place where it looks like it could break out, they could force a breakout. That's just one man's opinion. Next stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker AWRE, Aware Inc. Now she's got a lot of things going for her. One, she's got a low float. Two, she's got lots of filings and they're good. And three, she's got current news and it's good too. Problem? I can't find a catalyst amongst all of that and I really need a catalyst. The chart on this stock, which is how I found it in the first place, it's not just hot, it's breaking out. It's not just set up for a breakout, it's in breakout mode right now. So I'm looking for something to push it. So I'm hoping something will develop with this company real fast. AWRE, she finished the day at $1.74 and she fell just a little over 1%. So they tell us here that the company is a global authentication company that validates and secures identities using proven and trusted adaptive biometrics. We're not talking passwords anymore, no more multiple devices. They're gonna use you as the password. You're gonna to have to give up your fingerprint and the retina of your eye, or your voice and the structure of your face, something like that. They're not working with any of the simple ways to prove who you are, they're going hardcore. So what was the relative volume around AWARE today? Well, she jumped. No big numbers. We went from 28,000 to 37,000, but she is catching attention. We need that. Share structure for AWARE. All right, I did look this up. What was that float I found for this company? Ah, yes. This is between 12 and 15 million. I went to Google, found both numbers a couple of times, so I'm really not sure, but either way, it's a pretty decent float, right? 12 to 15 million. 
financials for aware at the end of 2021 we were at 16.8 million dollars looking at 2022 all right we've got three quarters here four million four million three million that's eight eleven twelve million that they've got so far and they did 16 million last year so they need to get another four million this next quarter they're keeping up barely let's take a look at their disclosures they've got lots of them now we're only looking at the current ones we're back to november here we have got a ton of form fours form fours are when insiders buy or sell shares of stock now we're not going to look at all of these but let's take a look at a couple of them down here in november we have stafford johns he is a director he owns 10 percent of the company and he has bought uh whoo, about three hundred thousand shares for roughly a dollar 65 a piece let's take a look at another one here uh this is Eco Robert, he's the CEO and president, and he too has bought some shares. He bought 14,000 shares at $1.70. That's why I like Form 4s. This is where we get to see our insiders investing in the company. Then we got a 13G. This is when outsiders start investing in the company. A 13G is a beneficiary ownership. It means they got a new partner. Somebody's bought enough shares that they now own a portion of this company, a certain percentage. Whoever this was, I can't remember the name, they now own 7% of this company. Let's take a look at that news then. So we don't have a lot of news over here, and most of the news has to do with either them demonstrating their technology or being recognized for their technology. <laughs> I just noticed something that I completely forgot. There is a catalyst. Tomorrow, after the bell, they are reporting their financials. Now, I had found another stock I was going to share with you. It had a great chart, looked good. They were reporting their financials too, but they were doing it before the bell. Well, how are we going to take advantage of that? At least here we've got one day. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what you think of that. So this is AWRE. We're going to be looking at a six-month, four-hour chart as we normally do. So we've got a high bubble here of $2.50 back in August, and we tapped the 200 way back then. Then we had a low here in mid-November of $1.32. She bounced off of that in a hurry, went straight back to the 200-day SMA. Has been pretty much clung to this area all this time. Now for the entire six months, she has been falling and she has been trapped inside of this channel. And right now she is breaking out of everything. She has not only come out of the channel, now she's come out of the channel before, but she just came out and came back in. This time she's come out and stayed out. And not just that, she's on top of her 200. She's been going over that as well and coming back underneath. So she's gotten two birds with one stone out of the channel on top of the 200. Our volume isn't very strong and our technicals aren't very strong right now. Things are cooling off with this pullback today. Now I'm going to bounce right on down to the five minute chart. I like the way this looks. We had a low here of $1.57. We were underneath the 50, underneath the 200, underneath our channel. We broke all of it. Vroom! Went through it all. Been up here for three days consolidating. Had a bump and bounce here, not sure why. She came down under the 50, but stopped right on top of her channel and is sitting there right now, far above the 200-day SMA. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen with this, folks, and it is a bit of a speculative play because we're gonna see this tomorrow but not have any information till after the bell. That's when the financials come out. Now, maybe some volume will come in. Maybe you'll see some excitement, but you're going to have to watch her. And if you buy into it, you're really not going to know how she turned out until the day after when all the information is released. So do your due diligence. Don't just trust me. Trust you. You know, each day I try to stir things up around here and keep it fresh for you. The stocks we looked at today, one of them was a subpenny stock. One was almost 20 cents and one was over a dollar. And they had soft catalysts at best. But what they do have are hot charts. All those charts were ripping. They were ready to take off. So we're gonna find out, do you need a big catalyst to get a hot chart to move or is a soft catalyst enough? Let's call this an experiment.
Remember folks, I do share a lot with you, but the best due diligence you're going to do is the due diligence you do yourself. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.